Good evening all, and welcome. Strange creatures are known to hail from the depths of isolated places, so that's exactly where we're gonna go. I hope you're ready for tonight's cryptid hunt, so get comfortable, and let the darkness take control. Let me start off by saying that this happened four years ago, when I was 15, on a Muzloda mule deer hunt in the far northeastern part of Utah, which contains some of the most remote and beautiful places in the state. I've been frequently out in this area, spreading in Summit County, that cuts in and out of Lower Wyoming since before I can remember, including lots of hiking, backpacking, camping, hunting, and being involved in some of my grandfather's work. I am skeptical of things not proven by methods of science, but I don't deny all of those things. I find it's impossible for science to know of all that is out there in our vast world. My grandfather is a recently retired biologist and former conservation officer for the state, and was a regional specialist, and was a regional specialist of wildlife and habitat management for many years. He's done everything, from habitat management programs, controlled fires to benefit areas, to quite literally wrangling moose to be transplanted, and darting black bears. He's seen mountain lions, bears, birds of all kinds, small mammals, ruminants, plants, and natural phenomena, for the majority of his life. And he understands so much that many people, including myself, will never be able to even begin to imagine. He's scientific, honest, straightforward, level-headed. He's agnostic and not superstitious, and often used to, lovingly and respectfully, tease a certain co-worker who thinks Bigfoot skinwalkers and other beings exist. Other than this experience, he has never encountered an animal that he could not at least partially, if not completely, identify. And other than the natural, innate fear of being in close quarters with bear, drunken belligerent hunters, or incredibly potent tranquilizer medication, he's told me over and over, he's never been terrified of an animal or experience like this. Only curious, or surprised. It was late September, and we were in a small camp by a lake in the high Uinta Mountains, hunting both grouse and mule deer, with muzzleloaders. The camp was a small collection of men and women my grandfather had worked with over the years, and a supervisor slash biologist, and others, people I'd grew up with as well. One of the women, a new wife to one of the guys, had shot a buck deer, injuring but not killing it immediately, and they had lost track of it. Devastated by the thought of wasting the animal, she returned to camp in the afternoon upset, and concerned that the deer had run into an even more secluded area of the mountains, which was hard to reach for the trail that she had shot from. A place my grandfather was familiar with, because it was such a pain in the ass to get to, with lots of deadfall and steep terrain. We volunteered to go in the late afternoon to search for the deer, following a scant blood trail that she had tracked for a while before getting fatigued and intimidated by the terrain. Because both my grandfather and I were in good shape, and he was so familiar, it didn't seem like a big deal. Before we left, she mentioned hearing that she assumed coyotes were in the area, which made her even more concerned that if the deer lived, they would ruin the meat and hide before she could harvest it. We took off in the early evening, expecting to be back within an hour or two after searching and having our weapons with us, in case we found the animal still alive, or came across another buck worth trying to harvest. It was steep in places with lots and lots of deadfall, of varying heights making the hike slower and more tedious than we had hoped, making us understand the other hunter's fatigue. She had marked the blood trail with bright orange pieces on the trees, which we followed for 20 minutes. And then it got harder to track. The sun was getting close to setting at this point, 
and we knew getting out would be just as long as getting in. We had just about decided to stop when we found a spot near a fallen tree that looked like it had been recently bedded down in, followed with spatters of fairly fresh blood, and we continued for longer. When the sun had just about set, and the light had faded from the trees, we removed the firing caps from our guns to make them completely safe, as it was now illegal and irresponsible to hunt in such absence of decent light. My grandfather pulled out his large maglite flashlight from his backpack, and I put my headlamp on to begin the hike back using our GPS to find the trailhead. 10 minutes on the way back, we started to hear more movement among the trees. It was normal for animals to start moving now that the sun had gone down, as animals would likely be starting to head towards a clearing for water or to graze in the safety of lower lights. Small and distant sounds of crunching leaves, patterings of hooved animals or small bits of movement of the trees from squirrels or birds were common and expected. We did not expect to hear the deafening disturbing sound we heard next, which vaguely and initially reminded me of a coyote howl, but by a few seconds, it was unidentifiable frightening and human-like. It started with what sounded like a person screaming, but then got louder and more intense with a screech to it, so unlike any coyote or any animal we had ever heard. Then was the almost chittering that came in between the shrieks and the movement of the trees becoming almost calculated, almost threatening. We stopped dead in our tracks, frozen as my grandfather started using the light to look around. I was far more freaked out than him at this point. He just seemed perplexed, curious, and a little baffled at what could make that sound. It sounded human, but with no words, with no urge of tone of help, or I'm screaming just to mess with you. We continued on after it mostly stopped, and it seemed like the other natural and distant sounds had gone almost silent. I listened intently to the sound of my boots crunching with the dry aspen leaves underfoot, trying to tell myself that it was just some weird coyote with a horribly deformed larynx or something. Maybe 20 minutes from the main trail that would lead us to the truck, we heard the chittering sound again, the sounds of thumping against dead trees. Looking around us with our lights, in between deadfall, Maybe 12 to 15 feet in front of us was a large human looking thing. It was almost hunched down with long slender arms around the front of a standing aspen. The aspen of course was pale white with the knots being dark brown and whatever it was had skin almost as pale. I caught a very brief glimpse of its face. It seemed round and the eyes seemed sunken, and I could not tell you the colour other than a flash of reflection on the eye from my light, and that its face seemed sunken and emaciated. I didn't see any fur or hair. I never felt like it looked right at me. More my grandfather, and just in our direction, almost confused and curious, like he was before the sound. For a mere couple of seconds, I caught a glimpse of it, but that was it. I looked down at the ground, holding my eyes shut tight, trying to imagine being safe and secure in the truck, and my grandfather took a few stumbling steps backwards towards me. I heard the thing go off to our side, moving quickly and with purpose through the trees, to the side, and then dropped down behind us. That's what I would assume according to the sound, but I hoped it went in the opposite direction. My grandfather turned to where it had veered off, as to follow it, but he soon stopped and looked at me. I have never before and never since seen him so confused, baffled, horrified, curious and in awe. I was crying at this point, ugly crying, trying to muffle my shaking breath and voice, and I asked him, what was that? Over and over I asked him, yet he had no answer for me. He pulled his gun off his shoulder 
and put a cap back on the nipple of the igniter, making the gun live, and then he carried it in front of his body in his arm. He pulled out another headlight and put it on himself. We started walking again towards the trail, as he listed off, as like talking to himself, to what it wasn't. Things like, could have been a deer or elk, moose, had arms, it was hunched, it stood upright, or a bear, a very sick bear? It could have been a bear, was it the light? We heard the sound, the screeching human howl, distant once more, before reaching the trail, which was dirt and gravel, but fairly flat and no deadfall. We practically jogged to the truck. I locked the doors immediately and sobbed, and my grandfather turned on music as loud as possible to try and distract me on the way back to camp. I was a mess when we arrived back, and he went to talk with the others by the fire, when he got me settled in my sleeping bag in my bunk. He explained to some of his friends, but I don't know what they all said. The next day everyone was extra sweet to me, trying to comfort me saying it was probably a sick animal that looked scary in the dark. The deer the hunter shop was found the next day in the daylight, scavenged quite harshly by what I assume was coyotes. To this day he has no clue what it was, nor what that sound was, and before and since, I've heard both coyote and many other animal sounds that never even compared to that one. The scientist, in me, and in him, the hopeful and blissfully ignorant people in us, hope and speculate. It was just a deformed sick animal in scant light. But I have no clue of what that thing was, and I hope I never experience it again. Does anyone have any ideas? The Pacific Northwest is a place of wonder, and where we believe creatures of lore exist. There have been too many various sightings here. I wouldn't say demonic in nature, more like there are tangible beings, the skies are vast, the air is clean, and there is a mystic feeling here, almost as if when you turn a corner, you might see a fairy. We never want to live anywhere else. I've been renting a farm style house with my two grandchildren, my son and his fiance, for almost three years now. We have a well under the back of our house and a pump house behind us. There are about 10 acres of land looking out towards Mount Rainier, and we have a two car garage connected to a big workshop, and next to us is a forest. All the things I will be describing have been spread out since we have lived on this property. Sometimes we hear screams coming from the forest, and all the wildlife becomes still and quiet. Occasionally, we've listened to what sounds like a metal chair scraping on a concrete floor in the distance that echoes over our land. I've spoken to the young man and his brother, who currently live on the same lot, but closer to the forest, and they told me that they hear it too, but stay in after dark, because it feels like they're being watched. They all think there's something off with this land. His brother also shared that he sees a demon boy, as he put it, in his room, as well as other places in the house. I ask him why he calls him a demon, in which he replies, because he scares me and messes with my stuff. I don't really think it is a demon, but what he saw and what we saw in our house will be for another time to tell. As for the noises in the forest, I have compared these sounds to various wildlife indigenous to the area but found nothing. This was when we first moved here on the property that is surrounded by farms. One late night I was driving down the lonely road home lit only by a handful of street lights, when I saw a flash of eyes in the distance. Not wanting to hit what I thought might be a deer, I slowed down. When I arrived at where I thought it was, it was gone but the side of the headlights shined on something greyish white, and I noticed something almost the size of a man crawling into the bushes. I saw its back muscles and shoulder blades, and its back leg. There was no fur, no tail, and no feathers, just light-coloured muscles. 
I quickly turned the corner hoping to see it crawl over the train tracks on the other side of the bushes, but it wasn't there. So I went home. I know what I saw in my headlights. I'll try to compile all that we have seen in these three years. We know there is something going on with this land. My two adult children, my son's fiance and I, have seen this tall white creature. It stands about seven feet tall with large eyes peeking around the workshop, revealing its head, chest, shoulder, arms and its hands on the wall and part of its foot, or it peeks into the garage window. And we have seen this on many occasions, a few times from my son's window upstairs. My daughter was here for a visit once. She thought she dropped something earlier out back when she was playing with the kids in the yard. It was dark. So she and my son went out there and they both had flashlights to find whatever it was she dropped. They were searching for a while, when they heard something rustle in the tall grass beyond them. She shined her light in the direction of the noise and standing there in the field was the same creature. So they both ran like hell back to the house. She later moved out of state and it's been over a year since this happened. So before I wrote this, I gave her a call. I didn't want to lead the conversation. So I simply asked her what she remembered. She described that thing to a T and went on by telling me about the time she saw it on the roof of the garage, where both awnings meet. She stepped out onto the front porch and something caught her eye over the garage. She said she stepped closer and it tilted its head. My daughter then turned to tell her brother to look. And when she looked back, it was gone. Then of course, she had to ask me, don't you remember me telling you when you thought I was on drugs? I do remember that. And I apologized. I don't think this or these things have an intent. Or at least I would hope not. It's just scary. On an earlier evening, my son and his fiance were leaving the garage from the side door. And my son locked eyes with this same thing crouched on all fours on a lawn couch outside my bedroom window. He said it was white with pasty skin and had a long neck with big round eyes that almost glowed. Its head stayed fixed on him and straight, but moved up and around clockwise and back like it was sizing them up like an owl. It was crouched with knees. It was not an owl. My son then started pushing his girl faster to the house. It was a while before they went back over there, never alone and never at night. Just to let you know, we have never seen a raccoon or squirrel on the property. Another time I was on my front porch one evening, I let the dogs out one last time before bed and noticed that they were acting all skittish. They did their thing and piled it up in front of the door with crazy eyes as if they wanted to go in now. Thinking it might be coyotes, I let them in and went to the end of the porch to see what was frightening them. I kept a light on above the back door and another one further down on another area of the back of the house. Something was tall enough to block out the light casting its shadow on the wall of the garage. It couldn't have been a giant moth on the light because the shadow was cast by both lights. That gave me the creeps to think about that something was standing right outside my back door. My granddaughter keeps her window blind shut after dark, even though there is no one around. She says she feels uneasy. We are not living in fear by any means. It's just different. This hasn't been an everyday occurrence, but it is enough to take notice. I have no explanation as to what it is. At first I blew it off thinking it was just some sort of wildlife we didn't know about before. But after seeing these things for almost three years and getting validation from others, I know that it is so much more. Maybe someday before we move, and I ever get my hands on some proper camera equipment with night vision, I will share my findings. When I was seven, we had just moved into a house after having lived in an apartment before that. I was beyond happy. We had a big backyard and about an acre of woods after that. Perfect for a kid to run around and explore. 
Christmas Eve was held at our house, and we had a full house. It was incredibly cold, so all the kids were kept inside, which was fine because we had games and all of the glorious 70s TV Christmas specials. It was 11pm when everyone had left, and I was in bed trying to fall asleep. But hey, good luck with that kids. An hour later, everyone was asleep except for me. When I heard a faint crunching noise outside that I realized was getting louder. It was starting to freak me out when a shadow appeared at my window. It was a bright moon that night and reflected off the four to six inches of snow. I looked at it against all my instincts and I swear, I saw a giant humanoid figure with horns, like a massive dude almost filling the window. At that point, I don't know how else to describe what I felt, except for saying it was like an acceptance of pure dread and terror. Then the shadow seemingly evaporated. That's when I jumped out my bed screaming and ran to my parents room. They were already up, having heard my screams. My dad grabbed his hunting rifle and ran outside. My mum and I looked outside from their window and we saw my dad yelling at the woods gum raised. I saw a set of tracks that led right up to my bedroom window and just ended. My dad, who was a seasoned hunter, later told us the tracks just ended, and whoever it was didn't backtrack. I've never seen my dad scared before, nor ever again. He was a vet, and all around a fearless kind of guy. We never figured out what happened that night. It never happened again, thankfully. That's not the creepy part though. I had dreamt of this exact encounter for the previous two years down to my dad outside with his rifle. This story takes place during the summer, when I was 15. I was living with my dad and stepmother at the time. I remember my stepmother throwing a royal fit about buying me new school clothes because I had left a few pairs of pants get holes in them and still wore them. It was my first year going to high school, and I wasn't going to let her spoil that for me. So I went to stay with my grandparents for the summer to earn some money. They live in a remote small area that was once home to many native tribes, most prominently, the Quinault tribe. It's very secluded despite being only a mile or so from the highway, and it's all lush, gorgeous forest. My grandpa had built his own three story house and a shop where he cut and assembled cedar into roofing products. That's where I came in. Hauling heavy chunks of cedar to his van, stacking, nailing, cinching up shake and shingle into bundles to be sold. I made good money while there and was able to buy an entire new wardrobe. As summer was coming to an end, and it was too hot to work. I decided to take a walk one day. Now let me say I spent my childhood roaming these woods. Armed with my grandparents two dogs, we ran and played and napped all day. And I've never seen anything out of the ordinary or gotten any weird vibes. I waited until it was a bit cooler in the evening and started out, walking a little path that would take me out to an old unused logging road. I had tread this same path so many times that I wasn't even paying attention until I felt that I was being watched. I would like to note here that I was young at the time. I had yet to touch drugs or alcohol and still have no history of hallucination or mental illness along those lines. What I saw still haunts me to this day. There he was, standing naked in the middle of my path, looking down at me with a blank expression. He was tall maybe seven feet, much taller than my five feet nothing. He had long black matted and gray hair. And there were tufts of it growing from the sides of his arms and legs as well. There were no genitals, only smooth flesh where they should be. And his skin. It was such a sickly pale yellow. It looked to be far too big for stature and hung in some spots. We made eye contact. His yellow orbs felt like they were staring into my soul. I couldn't move or think. 
Everything had gone silent around me. The next 10 seconds or so of my life seemed to stretch out. We just stood there looking at one another before he swiftly turned and walked back into the trees. The foliage went undisturbed as he melted through it and vanished. I honestly expected him to charge me or at least be intimidating, but he just turned and left. I haven't seen him since either, nor am I too enthusiastic to go out looking. I remember telling my grandma about it, but she told me it was probably just drug addicts in the area she lives in, as they are a high number of users and manufacturers of methamphetamine. I've told this story to others before, but I've never really gone out my way to share it, particularly because it sounds made up. I've tried looking in Native American folklore, especially the local stuff, but haven't found anything matching that description. If you actually have any idea on what this particular being might be, please let me know. I would love to find out. I've been looking for a place to share this experience for a while, and I think I found it. This happened 10 years ago. I grew up in South Georgia, so there's a good bit of forest. It was around 11 or 12 at the time and I lived in a small neighborhood in the woods. My family consisted of my mother, stepfather, sister and I, and we had about an acre of land to ourselves, bordered by about five to 600 acres of woods. We were in our side of the yard, sitting around a fire about 50 feet from the tree line. It was about 5 p.m. and we were all talking, joking around, and we were trying to scare my sister with a dumbass piggy man story. While everyone was still talking, I started to hear something. So of course, I told everyone to be quiet and listen. Now, although I live in the South, we don't have many large animals. The largest we have are white-tailed deer and hogs. Deer have a very quiet step and generally avoid people. Hogs, on the other hand, are pretty loud. However, it's very easy to identify their noise. What we were hearing were steps, loud and heavy and only steps, no digging, no grunting that a hog would make. So my stepfather decided to get his 3.06 and go investigate. Meanwhile, my sister was scared and my mother took her back under the carport away from the fire in the dark. I stayed by the fire and wanted to see the events that would transpire. While my mother called for me to come inside, so I turned to her to protest. Here's where it gets good. My mother got this look of confusion, I think, on her face. Now this made me turn around. At this point, I'm standing 50 feet from the tree line and 20 from our door. I turned to see 10 feet away from me the biggest animal I've ever seen in my life. It was a foot taller than me, and I was five foot tall at the time. It looked like a dog. It was larger than a Great Dane and was built like a pit bull. Now my neighbor at the time had two Great Danes, but Danes are rather tall and thin. This thing was two feet taller than both her dogs, and it looked built enough to pull a semi truck. This thing was sitting like a dog and was still six feet tall, not on its hind legs. I froze for a second. It was sitting just at the edge of the fire, just close enough for me to make out most of the details. All it did was stare right in my eye. Finally, I realized I needed to move and bolted back to my door. One more thing. I was playing multiple sports at the time and was in decent shape, meaning I was not slow by any means. From the moment I started running to the moment I got to my door, probably took no less than two seconds. I get there, look back and this thing had made it back to the tree line within the two seconds it took me to get to my door. It cleared 50 feet in two seconds from a dead start. Now I can't remember many details from the face. I do remember that it had no antlers and had pointed ears like that of a dog, a pit bull mix and that it had very bright eyes. I don't remember the color though. My mother, sister and I sat in the kitchen to wait for my stepfather to return and we hear a gunshot. Now I'll make a long story shorter. 
and just say that my stepfather came back to the house and he said he saw glowing red eyes and fired, at which point he wet himself and ran back to the house. I don't know how much stock to put into what he said, as he's well known to be a liar. I think I've put all the relevant information I can at that moment, but it's been killing me to know if anyone knows what this could have been, or if anyone else has seen it. I would absolutely love to talk about it. In 2016, I went to study abroad for a year in Munich, Germany. I went to plenty of places in this time, local towns to explore, and further regions of the country for hiking. I got to know this girl in my program and we started spending more time together as we were both from the Detroit area and went to the same university. I liked her. I was a 19 year old male and she was a 20 year old female. She liked me, and I was a bit more spontaneous with exploring, with the idea of being as random as possible. This particular day was December 26th, and we were at Marienplatz, a central location and subway station in Munich, deciding on where we wanted to go and what we wanted to do that day. I played a game with a friend back in the States called the highway game, where we would just drive, take random highways, and take exits randomly to get as lost as possible. And we would just have a good time talking during our time, trying to get back home without any use of GPS. Anyway, why this is important is because that's what I and my friend were doing at Marienplatz, just getting lost, which is how we ended up taking an S4S barn train towards Ebersberg. We still hadn't decided which exit we planned to take, as we were just sitting on the train and just waiting for the right moment to hop off. We decided to get off at the Baldam stop and begin to walk out of the station towards the village. We were in the beginning stages of talking, having had some close moments while talking, and this just felt like another timeless talking session with her. We walked around the town and eventually found some woods to walk through, that were quite dense, covered with moss on the ground and tall pines everywhere. We made the mistake of going out in the early afternoon, and after an hour train ride arrived at around 3pm. And being in the middle of December, the sun was dropping quite quickly, making for a forest with a shadowy backdrop, where I couldn't see much beyond 100 feet or so. We found a pack of thick moss, void of any trees, which made for a nice spot to lie down and just stare at the clouds moving by. There wasn't any snow cover, and it was about 40 Fahrenheit, so not that cold. As we were sitting there taking it all in, I felt like it was a good moment to lean up and go in for a kiss. As I get up on my elbows looking at her, I notice something moving in the background within the shadows, just starting between the trees. It wasn't more than a few seconds later than I realized whatever was darting between the trees was now darting towards us. I didn't think much of it since I thought maybe it had just been a dog. But as it got closer, I realized this thing was canine and huge. Before it reached us, I stood up and it stopped within feet of us just snarling and growling extremely loudly. I dragged my friend up and told her to just start walking away. I followed her but noticed that the canine creature walked in a circular path around us to the three o'clock position to where it stopped. I began to walk with her. And as I turned around to check where it was, I saw that it was gone. We never heard it leave or saw anything run away. The only thing we did hear was a howl about 30 seconds after we left from laying on the moss, at which point we decided to get the hell out of the woods. As we did, we came across a gentleman walking his small dog and greeted him and felt a sense of security, but nonetheless left as quickly as we could and went back to the station to catch the next train home. Now I know one of you may be thinking that it could have been a wolf, but later that evening I looked up to see if there were any wolves in the area 
but found that the majority, if not all wolves were killed following the expansion of human society on the continent, with the closest known population of wolves being near Poland, Ukraine and Russia. It could have been a very large dog. But let me tell you, I have dogs, and have grown up around dogs, and have been attacked by dogs before. I know what I saw. This was not your average canine. It looked wolf like, but was huge. If anyone has any idea what happened, or is from the Munich area and knows of anything like this happening, please tell me, as my now girlfriend and I still talk about how freaked out we were by this. All I can say is that just as quickly as I noticed the canine, and as it tried to attack us, it was gone making for a supernatural experience in my book. I was driving home two days ago at about 3am. I was driving on a British A road which is in the middle of nowhere and surrounded by forest. Now, I pretty much know this road like the back of my hand as I've been driving it back and forth, mostly at night for a long time. There are street lights, but they're quite dim and don't do a great deal of lighting up the road ahead. Now as a bit of background, I'm generally a calm driver. I don't know why, as I'm quite frantic in real life, but when I'm behind the wheel, nothing seems to faze me at all. But the other night, I'm pretty sure I nearly had a heart attack. I was driving along the road as per usual on my way back home. The only way to describe this is to say that about 150 yards ahead of my car, out of the woods, this humanoid creature bolted into the road. It was a light grey colour, and hunched over on all fours, but could easily be about eight to nine feet tall stood upright. This thing bolted into the road at an unnatural speed and disappeared into the woods on the other side of it. Now there's four lanes and no central reservation, so it was a straight sprint across. I tried to rationalise this as a bird, but I knew for a fact that it wasn't. Like I said before, I'm a very calm driver, but as soon as I saw this thing, I had instantly turned freezing cold and started sweating, almost on the verge of crying. I don't know what my rationalization was, but some part of me wanted to slam on my brakes out of panic, to take a breath, but I just put my foot down and drove way too fast to get away from what I saw. I don't necessarily know if it's relevant, but I remember looking at the clock, and it was dead on 3am. Apparently this is the strange hour for unexplained things going on. If anyone else has had a similar experience or knows what this hell this thing was, I would love to hear about it. Because even thinking about it gives me a cold chill. Due to the quarantine, my dad and I wanted to get out of the house and just get the bikes rolling for a few days. Last Thursday, we locked up the house, packed the saddlebags, fired up the bikes, him on a 58 Panhead, and me on a Triumph Bonneville, and rode up the Blue Ridge Parkway to the Nantahala National Forest. Since all the state park campgrounds are closed, we set up the tents in a little private campground by the river in a fairly remote place. Railroad tracks cut a path through the woods, then stretched into the distance. We passed the nearest town hours ago. That night after the fire was embers, and my dad had retired, I was sitting by myself texting some friends. My phone was running out of juice and I wanted to give my boyfriend a call before it died. So I walked to the other side of the clearing, staring into the darkness of the tree line. It was then that I began to feel a sense of unease, like I was being watched through the trees. I sat on a stump by the tracks and glanced down the rails, catching a dark silhouette against the starry night sky and the moon reflecting off the slick tracks. I squinted thinking it was just the trees playing tricks on me. Then it moved. That's when the dread hit me like when you're hiking through the woods and spot a grizzly bear ambling across the trail. It was a distinctly humanoid figure, with a thin torso and spindly limbs, no discernible facial features. 
It was about 30 yards away, crossing the tracks away from me. I stumbled back and fell on my ass. When I got back up, it was gone. I went back to the tents shortly after that, and didn't sleep at all. It may have been some sort of dream or hallucination or mirage, but I saw something. I used to live in really rural Texas and was driving down a farmer's market road during some very thick fog. I was in an old pickup truck and was going maybe 20 to 30 miles an hour because I couldn't see very far ahead. As I came around a bend, I saw through the fog this big hulking figure lurching across the road. I slowed down, pulled up to pass it, when I saw it was the biggest hog I'd ever seen in my life. A 400 pound one, certainly. It was dead, presumably destroyed whichever car hit it, and dragging it to the side of the road was an absolutely massive white shaggy dog. This dog, I was in a pickup truck and it made eye contact with me. It lifted its head and stared at me, eye level for what felt like an eternity. I stopped my truck and stared, I was so caught off guard. After a few seconds, it put its head back down, grabbed a chunk of hog and continued to make its way off the road. To break it down, the dog was smart enough to move that animal it wanted to eat, large and strong enough to drag a 400-ish pound hog across pavement, and tall enough to look at me in the eye in a pickup. I'll never forget those eyes. It had a mud-stained white fur coat, a big block head and a long wolfy tail. It almost looked like a Pyrenees, but with a big St. Bernard shaped head and double the normal size with glowing yellow eyes. I have no idea if it was some sort of freak farm dog, a spirit or wolf or whatever, but I would never want to see it again. I live in the Campo, as we call it. So I'm about seven kilometers away from the nearest town, where we had people up here. And they said that we had four lines of energy crossing over our land, which explained the strange things I and my family have seen on our land. This is one of the 50 or more experiences. This one was very odd. I had to walk to the bus stop every morning. And when it became winter, it was completely dark when I had to get up. One night I was walking down my mountain road and I noticed something. It was tall, whatever it was, and stood in the middle of an empty field. At first I thought it must have been a blur or a bug that flew past me, but when I looked at it, it was still there. How I tell if I'm hallucinating? I will close my eyes for 10 seconds and think of a color. If when I open my eyes, the hallucination has even a hint of that color, I ignore it. After checking, I realized it must be real and standing there. This is how I describe this thing. It was tall, pale, its head was white. It had long, long arms, but its body was black and it was at least three meters tall. Now I know what you're thinking. This is a troll or something, but it's similar to Slenderman. I never liked Slender Man. I was never scared of him. And at this point, he'd been dead for years. So the fact that I was hallucinating about him didn't make any sense. I decided to ignore it. It can't be Slender Man, that's ridiculous. But it kept showing up day after day. Not every day, but three out of the five days for school. I told friends and family, and of course no one believed me that this creature was following me. It wasn't in the same place either. It vanished at day and would reappear at night. I thought that it could be a scarecrow, but there were no crops, a prank maybe? Until one day, I saw it behind a mass of trees, its head peeking over at this point, and I thought I'd gone insane. Or that it was a prank, but it moved. It moved. And that was my first thought. It now followed me physically. It would walk behind me almost every day. I wasn't allowed a phone at the time, 
and we didn't have cameras because we were quite poor, so I had no way of documenting it, so I came up with a plan. I was going to make someone else see it. But unfortunately, that never happened. After one annoying morning, I decided I'd had enough of this, and turned and screamed at it. After shouting at the thing, it turned around and walked away. I thought I had told my subconscious to stop messing with me and it agreed. But later in life, I was proven wrong. My brother of eight also saw the creature. And to be fair, I'm 99% sure he'd never even heard of Slenderman. He saw it looking through his window at night. And a year ago, it stalked me again. I saw it wandering through the fog on a creepy day. Even my grandparents claim to have seen it. So have my friends, as one day we had a sleepover at mine and one of my friends came running back in after going for a wee and saying something about he's seeing Slenderman. We all make fun of him for it, because I knew that that would be the nail in the coffin. You see, the friends that stayed over at my house that night were the only people I never told as they didn't believe in anything remotely paranormal. One day while walking home, I heard a scream and the trees shake extremely violently in a nearby forest. At the time, I thought it could have been a Bigfoot. I don't know why. We don't have mountain lions or anything like that that could have roared that loudly or shaken the trees. I also heard three other stories in my town about two years back about a large slender creature eating someone's garbage and them having witnessed it. I've heard nothing as of late, and there has been a lack of paranormal events. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed tonight's cryptid hunt. I think we had some really strong stories today. And if you can help with all those curious folk who don't know what they saw, or have seen something similar, please feel free to reach out in the comment section. I'm sure it will make some people happy. If you have an experience of your own that you would like to share, you know that you can send it to my email or post it on my Reddit page. Either are fine, and you never know, it could feature in a video sooner than you might think. As always, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to my wonderful patrons. If you would like to receive some funky prizes for signing up, feel free to check the link in the description for more info. It really is appreciated and helps me keep doing what I enjoy and what you like listening to. So thanks guys. But for now, it's time for me to sign off. Stay awesome and I'll see you in the next one.